uh, good morning everyone uh, 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 thanks for joining the session uh, my name is saurabh jain and i work for uh, linux technology center uh, at ibm uh, india uh, uh, this presentation uh is a, th this work the the work is done to you know improve the the reliability of k dump in the event of cpu or memory hot plug uh when we submitted this proposal uh, uh when we submitted this proposal this work was uh, still under review and then uh, we wanted to get some feedback from the community and see how we can take this work forward and get it accepted upstream uh but uh, when after the proposal submission and, and it got uh, the patches got accepted upstream and then uh, now now my motivation is to you know introduce uh, this new feature in the kdump or i would say new improvement in the kdump and then uh, how other architecture also can enable uh, this this improvement in the kdump and uh, uh, like i did it for power pc uh, uh here it, uh, here's the agenda for my talk uh, i'll start with the brief overview uh, of the kdump uh how what exactly the kdump is how it works and things like that and then what impact kdump has whenever there's there's a, either cpu or memory hot plug happens in the in the system and then we'll talk about like what is the existing solution available to take care of those operation and then keep updating the fedm whenever there is such a hot plug event and then we see what what are the solution is proposed to you know uh, to to cover the shortcomings of the existing solution and we see the implementation detail and at the end i will share like what are the steps uh, uh, an architecture need to follow to you know enable this feature in in their architecture so now like what is kdump kdump is basically a linux kernel feature that allow you to you know collect the collect the crash term whenever there is a crash in the kernel uh, kdump kernel boots and try to collect the memory dump so like i represent in the in this diagram where you have this is your system ram and then uh, the production kernel is running and then when production kernel boots right we reserve some memory for the kdump kernel uh via crash kernel uh, crash kernel command line argument and then when the once the once the production kernel boots the kdm service uh, loads the kdm kernel and then you know kdm kernel uh, sits there in the reserved memory area and then wait for the production kernel to crash once the production kernel crashes the controls jumps from production kernel to the kdm kernel and then kdm kernel boots up and then you know try to try to uh, uh, try to uh, collect the dump and then export uh, the production kernel memory as a proc vm core so that you know user space uh, user space programs like migdump file you know uh, 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 filter it out uh, the unnecessary pages and things like that and finally store the dump into the disk so this is a basic overview now uh, kdump uh, kdump has multiple components uh, in in linux kernel these components are referred as a kexec segments but throughout this presentation i will i will i'll, I'll call out them as a k kdump component for the simplicity now uh, for a, for for a different architecture the component the the number of component may changes but but there are there are few set of component exist across all the architecture so for example this is the list of you know kdump components exist on power pc uh like we have kernel and init ramfs which basically kdm kernel and kdm init ramfs you know that that uh, this this kernel boots once the kdm once the production kernel crashes then we have elf core header uh, elf core header basically you know this 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 shares the dump image between the kernel so basically what does the how, what does the production how does the production kernel looks like basically this holds that information and then we have purgatory and the device tree so purgatory is is you know elf free locatable objects it's a it's a binary that yet you know uh, gets executed in between the production kernel and the kdm kernel so when the production kernel crashes uh, uh it jumps to the purgatory and then uh, purgatory does some sha verification and then after the sha verification is done it jumps to the kdm kernel so yeah this is the flow and then we have device tree basically holds the uh, uh, device related information you know for the kdm kernel to boot now if we further expand the elf core header elf core header uh, uh, consists of different datas so it is it is elf elf file and hence it has elf header uh and then have bunch of uh, uh, program header of uh, two different types uh, first is pt load and pt note so uh so first program header is of type pt note it holds uh, information about 
uh, about uh, CPU crash nodes. Uh, crash nodes consist of data related to PT register, PT regs, and things like that for each each CPU. Uh, for different architectures, uh, it can contain uh, information of number of online CPUs or maybe possible CPU depending on the arc, uh, depending on which architecture you are in. And then we have another program header to hold the all the address of the VM core info. VM for info basically, you know, uh, have the data about basic data about the production kernel, for example, the page size uh, and few symbols here, few symbols about the production kernel and things like that. And then after the VM core info, we have a bunch of program headers, a uh, uh, bunch of program headers to hold the, the memory regions for the uh, memory regions belongs to the production kernel. So every program header will be pointing into different program uh, uh, program uh, memory regions of the production kernel. So yeah. Uh, this is, you know, this is, this is, this defines, you know, the different component of the KDAM. Now, uh, architecture may have few other, uh, few other component in addition to this, or we may have some different component as well. Just uh, this is, this is specific to the power PC, but uh, the kernel in ram FS, elf core and purgatory, I think these are the, these are the common uh, KDAM component available across the architecture. Device tree, uh, I think it's available on power PC and other architecture, but not, not in all architecture. So yeah, this is the code KDAMP overview. Now we'll move on to like what impact, uh, what impact KDAMP have, what, what impact we have on KDAMP when whenever there is a CPU or memory hot plug operation. As we have seen, right, like uh, uh, Elf Core header represents like uh, the CPU inform. Elf Core header holds uh, CPU information and then the memory regions available for uh, memory regions of the production kernel. So in case there's a memory for example for example if the memory hot plug operation happen and the memory memory get removed from the system then this help core header is holding the stale data and and if you try to collect the if you try to collect the dump with the obsolete elf core header uh, the dump collection may fail or or if we may we may collect the inaccurate dump so which is which is not which is not correct right and then and same goes for the cpu as well so it holds it holds the cpu uh, nodes uh, either online cpu or possible cpu depending on the which architecture you are in but it holds the cpu information so even if the cpu hot plug operation happens and then that cpu information is not present here because the CPU got added later, then in that case also we will we will not collect the we we may collect the inaccurate dump. So uh, this is the basic overview of like what is the impact of CPU and memory hot plug on KDAM. Now let's move on to the to the existing solution. Uh, what we have is like so we have uh, we have a UDEV rule uh, which we use to you know monitor keep monitoring CPU and memory hot plug event in the user space. And then whenever there's a whenever there's a whenever there's an event observed, whether it's a CPU add remove or memory add remove, uh, CPU add remove or memory add remove, we you know uh, a UDEV rule triggers a KDAM service reload, which base, what it does is basically whatever the KDAM image that we have loaded, it will it will go for a task and then it will reload the KDAM again. So this is this is the existing solution. This is how we you know bring the uh, this is how we update the KDAM. Monitor monitor the CPU hot plug event in the user space. Whenever an event comes, uh, uh, reload the entire KDAMP image. I want to emphasize a point where you know here we are reloading the entire KDAMP image, uh, which consists of all kernel, init RD, and then elf core header and bunch of other components. Now th there are few shortcomings uh, for the uh, associated with this solution, right? So. Uh, given that as i showed right here uh, we have whenever there's a hot plug operation only elf core header or a device tree maybe few other components in other architecture gets obsolete but what we are doing with this solution is like we are reloading all the kdm component so this is one of the this is inefficient right we why we are loading uh, all the kxx segment whereas only one or two kxx components are getting uh, obsolete and this has uh, and this creates a major you know service uh kdom service down window so what happens is let's say uh, uh because of because of the any hot plug operation the kdom uh, the kdom gets obsolete and then what happens is let's consider a specific system called kxic load system call in that case what will happen is like the user space will again you know create all the components and then load into a user space buffer and then kernel will again again copy back those uh, uh, those buffer to uh, to the reserved area this takes a lot of time you know 
and then the meanwhile uh, this process is going on the kdum service is down and if we try to collect the dump uh, in this in this window the kdum service uh, i'm the uh, the dump will not be the dump will not get collected now uh, this solution worked fine till now but you know as the modern workload where you know in the cloud like environment where where the hot plug operations are more common uh, uh this makes uh, the situation worse because what happens is like for every hot plug operation you are trying to you know reload the entire kdum so when there is a bulk operation uh, uh, this makes the kdum service really reload so many times and since we are doing it full kdum reload it really makes things worse and then we have seen couple of issues where you know uh, when we do hot plug operation in bulk and then all the reloading thing will happen and because of there are few race condition uh, even after all the reloading the kdum kernel will uh, the the uh, the the kernel cache will not end up in the dump collection so these are the few you know the shortcoming of shortcomings of the existing solution that we 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 have identified and you know uh, we try to solve with the with the, trying to solve this shortcomings with the proposed solution now uh, here is the proposed solution like we have we we have two principle in the proposed solution we wanted to you know uh, we want to consider we wanted to do everything in the kernel and then only update the relevant kx segment so handle all four operation whether it's a cpu add remove or memory add remove handle everything in the kernel and then only update the relevant kx segment based on the type of the hot plug operation so let's say if the cpu hot plug operation happens and you only need to update elf core header and device tree then only update this these two component rather than updating the kernel and init ram fs and everything so yeah so this gives us you know uh, uh, tremendous uh, gain in the gain in the uh, it just reduces the kdm service window downtime and then you know uh, and then and then in the some operation that we have identified that uh, for for example on x86 uh, we don't need to reload uh, we don't need to reload any of the kx component at all because of because of because of the few changes that we have introduced and identified during 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 this uh, during this exercise uh, uh, so and i collected uh, and i collected few performance number like the how much it how much time it used to take uh, when we used to load reload the uh, we reload the kdm kernel with the existing solution and with the proposed uh, with the proposed solution so as you can see in the result we i have added one table where it says the cpu hot plug for existing solution it takes 1 second uh, whereas in the proposed solution it takes around 4 millisecond uh similarly on the memory hot plug since we are doing the entire entire kdm reload for with the existing solution it takes same one second and then in the proposed solution it takes around 0.03 millisecond which is very less this some this number i just to you know show you with with the single core i mean but uh, but it gives a it gives us the advantage when there is you know the bulk of op bulk operations happens and things like that uh this really you know reduce reduces the 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 kdm service uh, down window uh, to in millisecond instead of seconds now uh, uh now i'm i'm going now i will take on the the implementation implementation details of our pro proposed solution now we have uh, uh, to load the kdm we have two system calls uh, first is kxic load and second is kxic file load in the kxic file load the difference between these two system call is like uh, is is how the kdm kernel is loaded and who loads the kdm kernel uh, for the kxic file load uh, the kdm the kdm is prepared in the kernel and then in the kxic load the the kxic tool in the user space prepare the prepare the kdm and then ask kernel to load it so so in uh, in our implementation we have a generic architecture that that you know that updates uh, that updates uh that updates the the kdm image but there are few bits uh, that needs to be changed based on the which system call is being used that 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 is specific to uh, that that which needs to be changed in the kernel for kxic file load and for uh, kxic load there are few bits we have changed in the in the kxic tool you know to enable this feature yeah so so Uh, this diagram shows like what are the things that we have introduced in the kernel to you know handle uh, handle the uh, to update the kdm uh, update the kdm in the kernel so we have introduced uh, uh, two crash uh, notifier uh, for uh, to handle both the cpu and memory hot plug 
so uh, this this hot plug uh, this this notifier gets gets invoked uh, whenever there is a cpu add remove and and uh, a memory add remove and then once they invoke they call a crash uh, crash handler hot plug event this is a generic hot plug event handler basically what it does is it does like it does like a few uh, bookkeeping things takes the necessary log to update uh, update the kdump image and things like that and then it passes control to the architecture specific uh, crash hot plug handler where you know actual update happens so uh, it's up to the architecture what are the things they want to update so architecture knows that i have uh, i have you know these segments available with me and uh, this is the type of the hot plug operation so i need to do these these updates so you uh, so the sequence is something like so let's say for cpu hot plug uh, whenever there is a cpu hot plug operation in the kernel uh, this notifier will be called and then this calls the crash hot plug notifier event which is a generic uh, generic uh, handler and then uh, it takes the necessary log and it calls the architecture specific handler to update the kdump now now, as I already mentioned, that there is a UDEV rule which basically reloads the KDEM kernel, right? So to make uh, to to keep user space in sync, that you know the kernel is capable of reloading or updating the KDEM kernel, we have introduced uh, two CSFS files, you know, for both uh, for both CPU and then memory uh, hot plug events. If this CSFS file contains one that that means that you know kernel is capable of uh, kernel is capable of updating the KDEM, so UDEV rule doesn't have to you know update or reload the KDEM service. So uh, this CSFS this CSFS uh, uh, attributes or this CSFS interface are introduced to uh, make user space aware. For example, UDEV rule to you know don't reload the KDEM service because the kernel will take care of updating the relevant KXX segments, and then. So uh, one of the point, uh, and that's this, 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 uh, this fourth point is specific for the KXX file load system calls. What happens is like when we, when we prepare, when we prepare the KDEM component, right? So there is, there is something, uh, there is something uh, I already discussed that in the purgatory we do the SHA verification to make sure that you know integrity is there and before booting into the next kernel. So since we are going to change the ELF core header. We need to skip the elf core header from the SHA calculation so that you know if anything changes in the elf core header it does not impact the SHA verification. So this is the, this point you know for the KXIC file load we have uh, we have excluded the elf core header from the SHA verification, SHA calculation basically. And then uh, to enable this feature, to enable disable this feature we have introduced a dedicated config uh, config crash hot plug. Uh, people can use this this config to enable or disable this feature. Uh, as I mentioned that uh, this commit is already uh, this this feature is already part of kernel tree and this is the this is the SHA uh, this is the commit ID for for that introduced this uh, this generic infrastructure in the Linux kernel. Now uh, this 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 the kernel story like this is this is how the kernel uh, you know updates the thing. But as I mentioned that for the KXIC file load system call, uh, the elf core header is prepared in the user space. Uh, so there are few changes we need to do in the U in the KXIC tool to make sure that you know kernel kernel has a permission or kernel is uh, kernel has a permission permission to update the any of the KDEM component which was prepared in the user space and so that the kernel can update it. So uh, uh, two primary things here is is <clears throat> is uh, KXIC tool is updated to you know uh, create the elf core header with the additional buffer so that if there are resource change in the future we can add more resources to the elf core header and then the new uh, new uh, kexic flag is been introduced so that you know uh, user space user space uh, user space convey to user space can convey to the kernel saying that you know uh, it's okay or it is safe to update the KDEM component uh, if it is loaded via kexic file load because if 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 this if this if we update if we update the if, if we update the elf core header and uh, if they update the elf core header it may it is possible that you know uh, the sha verification will fail because because the user space would have included the elf core header in in the in, in inside the for the sha calculation so uh, the kernel uh, for the kexic file load kernel will only update uh, the elf core header when this flag is passed by the by the by the kexic tool 
now uh, this is uh, yeah, this is the chart that talk about you know how other architectures can can add a support uh, for 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 this improvement so uh, what they need to do is like they have to first have to add a rcrash uh, handle hot plug event so uh, this function is responsible for you know uh, uh, this this function is called from the generic crash hot plug handler and then this this generic crash hot plug handler uh, uh, tells tells that this is this is the hot plug event type now you can update the the kdump uh, the kdump image so uh, this is how the this is how the uh, the r crash hot plug handler uh, e events are handler for x86 and power pc so for x86 uh, whenever there is a cpu add remove we don't update anything and for memory add remove we update l4 header the reason why we don't take any action for cpu add remove because uh, because the because the l4 header we built with the with the possible cpus so for an architecture if the l4 header is built with the online cpus uh, you need to update the l4 header to include the the elf node for the newly added cpus uh on power pc uh, uh for for remove case we don't take any action but for cpu add we you know we update the device tree because we have a constraint where you know uh we have to have the newly added cpus into the device tree else uh, else the kdm kernel won't boot and for the memory add remove we simply recreate the recreate the l4 header now these are these are the action you know these are the action uh, the architecture has to define inside the inside the arc crash hot plug handler uh, once this is defined the other other things the architecture uh, architecture has to do to you know enable this feature is to you know export these this is this file uh, one to this is this is file once they implement this feature the architecture has to you know uh, report one to this cfs file to you know advertise this feature to the user space so that udev rule won't uh, reload the uh, udev rule won't reload the uh, kdm service because the kernel is now capable of uh, updating the kdm kernel and then yeah uh, uh, there is there is uh, there is architecture specific config uh, it must be added you know in the in the rk config you know to enable this feature and then this is the this is a, one of the example i have added how to how to update the udev rule you know to to only reload only reload the kdm service when the when the when the when the kernel doesn't have this feature so if 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 we have uh, so this udev rule is something like when the cpu when there is a cpu hot plug operation uh, and then and then this sfs attribute contains one then you just directly go to the end of that uh, thing and don't don't do anything no action is needed so yeah this uh, i mean yeah yeah this this uh, this udev rule can be you know uh, updated like this to you know uh, to stop reloading when whenever there is a there is a cpu or memory hot plug operation is a can side i am up for the question if at all uh, people have any question regarding the implementation regarding the feature uh, any questions in the room uh, thanks for that that was interesting not um it's not really a question um i thought i'd describe how we try to avoid this problem on arm 64 for ARM64, we don't have a memory map um, that the kernel maintains. We discover it all from the firmware, and that means we don't pass that information along uh, in KZEC or KDUM. When a new memory region comes online, we don't have to update those regions because the next kernel will be able to discover that this memory will be using the ACPI STA methods that you can use at boot to query whether this region is there or not. I comment this just in case that was going to be simpler. Have to see if you have to do like the DT anyway, you probably have to keep So uh, if I if I if I if am I audible? Yes, sir. we can hear you. Okay, so what you're saying is like, you, then how, how, I mean, how your, how is your elf core header is built? Because, because if we see, right, I, I, I mean, uh, as far as I know, elf core header is, is built to, you know, hold the, all the crash memory regions, uh, and then along with the CPU crash node and the VM core info, how, uh, I mean, how do you transfer that information 
uh, to the KDEM kernel currently. Okay. Yep. So for KDEM, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to check. But for for K exec, uh, it's all discovered again once the second kernel starts up. Yeah, so you, you can query. I mean, I, I would, I, I would say, like, if, if there, there has to be some way, you know, to, you, ha, you should, you should be having some way to convey, uh, see, th these are the memory regions that you need to collect and then, you know, pass it to the KDEM kernel. Uh, I mean, I was in the impression that it's always be, you know, the cache memory ranges part of the elf core header, which contains all these data. But wouldn't that be all memory that's not in the carve out? The carve out can be described saying it's not this range. This is the range you can use in the KDUM kernel, but all other memory would be dumped, right? But for KDUM, I, I don't know what the Elf core header looks like off the top of my head, but if you can probe and detect regions as being there, that might be simpler. I think you've got other questions. No, um, uh, the thing is, um, if you have the panic kernel, it uses exactly the inversion of the memory that was used by the crashed kernel. And this is conveyed by the Yelp core header. And it also has some metadata like VM core info and, 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 and stuff. But uh, the, the main reason is you want to make sure that the memory that was used by the panic kernel is not used by the, uh, by the new kernel and vice versa. So you don't want to use any other source of information if possible. Yeah, but is there no firmware interface where you can simply query firmware? on where or what memory do we have and then simply store in the crash kernel on okay that's a crash kernel memory and we don't need to dump that yes there is and you should not be using it it, it, it causes all kinds of headache if uh, if uh, the panic kernel tries to reuse uh, efi mappings or device tree or whatever so no At the... <laughs> Curious what, the, curious what the problem is then, because so on ARM64, we only have the UEFI memory map. That is the golden truth about what is memory on the platform. You can add memory regions at runtime, um, and they're not described in the UEFI memory map, but the KDUMP kernel will go and have to find the ACPI tables and the UEFI memory map in order to learn about the system in order to bring it up. So one, one of the rules we have is that those structures, the ACPI tables, the DT, and the UEFI memory map must never be modified by the kernel, because otherwise we have a massive matrix of things to support. So I'm, I'm curious to know what the problems are with that because we're doing it on ARM64. Thank you. So um, there is a special device tree attribute to override this logic. And that is used by the panic kernel. Yes. So in that case, it was already parsed by the first kernel and it should be trusted. Okay. So um, continuing this discussion, I think, so does, is in the case of like a memory failure, memory error, uncorrectable memory, if the firmware is the source of truth, is the firmware, when it gets queried by the crash kernel, does it make sure to remove those poisoned memory, the bad memory, or is the, the dump kernel going to hit it and die itself? Because there was a patch for x86 recently to fix that in. Machine check. Yeah, so for, for ARM64, that's that's still all on the table. Um, no firmware doesn't know about memory regions that you've decided you're not going to touch anymore. It can't know that. Um, and that information doesn't get passed across. Yes, you would hit that a second time if it wasn't transient. Um, so yeah, we would, I don't think it's supported today, but my expectation is the, um, for KDump, the thing that's accessing memory to produce the dump file, make that memory accessible to user space, would need to be tolerant to taking machine check or an ARM64 external report, and it would need to skip that memory region and keep going. Um, but that, that's containable uh, on ARM64 at least. All right, uh, any other questions? Let me check and see if there are any questions uh, in the chat. All right, uh, so from the chat, uh, mess a question from Hari. Does ARM64 have a need for reloading KDUM service on hot plug operations? 
exporting VM core depends on ELF header core, I would assume R64 would have some way of, to set that up uh, in the production kernel. So th this is where my comments were more about kexec than kdump, but the, the panic kernel will be able to discover that these new memory regions are online. Um, and it, it could, if that information were missing to say dump these, it could know dump these. It knows they're not part of the carveout because the, the carveout's explicitly described to your, your point about knowing that you're the kdump kernel. Um, CPU hot plug's not yet supported on ARM64, but when it is, again, you can probe to discover those CPUs are present. So th there might be a piece missing here, but it doesn't necessarily need passing across between kernels because you can work it out on the other side. Okay, uh, if there aren't any other questions, I don't see any on the chat or in the room, then um, I think we're all set. Thank you very much. <laughs>